Hi folks, um, I had a request from um, one of the viewers to demonstrate the super advanced power play with Stratomatic. So that's what this video is going to be about. Just show how to use and uh, play out a power play. So whenever a power play happens, the first thing you would do is grab your action deck and count off three cards and put down an a penalty card. And you put out your power play units. So I'm just going to use from my last game I had, Colorado playing Toronto. I'll just use those. Uh, the first thing you do when you go to a face-off, you are going to add three to the power play team's face-off. So Lannis Gog is the best power face-off person in Colorado right now on the ice. He's a plus two. So you go three plus two is a five. And for Toronto, their top guy is Matthews. So... He's a plus three. So you're looking at a plus two on a face off. Now you can use an action deck or I use a 20 sided die. That way I don't go through all my cards all at once during a period. So if I roll, I get a 16. And on my face off chart, 16 for a plus two is in for your left winger. So if the team that is um, the, the team that's on penalty kill, everyone's a face off. You automatically go four on the timer. So I move that to four and then you have an option to skate or ice. I always, I always tend to ice the puck when I play it. So if I was to ice the puck, this counts as one. And, and then your read for icing it says puck intercepted by power play team inside shot for right winger. So puck would go to Rantanen. So rather than clicking off four for icing, since it wasn't iced, I'm only gonna move it one. Each card is worth one on the timer. The timer goes to 19. So it's gonna be an inside shot for Rantanen. So Rantanen's gonna shoot. It's a nine, which is a goalie rating, or goalie rating plus. Goalie rating plus is only a goalie rating on the power play. If it's five on five, it'd be save face off in the Toronto end. So we have a possible goalie rating. So we're going to check Jack Campbell. And a two, three, four, or six could be a possible goal. And we roll a nine, which is a rebound. So when you have a rebound, again, you're pulling a card. A card is only worth one. So we just move the timer one. When the timer hits seven, 13, and 19, that is when you flip one of these cards. So the deck is basically the timer for Stratomatic Hockey. So you're gonna flip it and just put it over. And we're gonna look for a rebound. So we, again, we go to an action deck, check for a card. Uh, I think I lost track, I was explaining it. And I don't know if I already moved it for one or not. Um, so we'll move it one for the card. And the rebound says defensive right D. So. Rebound goes over to Brody, and Brody has it. So Brody's going to ice it, and it says, Buck intercepted by power play team, inside shot for either D-man. So I move one for taking the card. Now we get an inside shot for either D-man. We're going to give this to McKinnon. It's going to shoot. It's a seven. It's a goalie rating again. So again, we're going to Jack Campbell's card. We get a five. And a five is a face-off. So now we have a face-off in Toronto's end. And again, we're going to move one for the face-off. Um, I can use a card. Maybe I'll use a card this time for the face-off. So we know that Colorado is plus two. And I draw one. So I just take a look at the one for the number. That's why I roll a 20-sided die. It kind of saves a card. So one at plus two is superior left D. So now McKinnon has the puck, and McKinnon has a choice. He can penetrate, which would be 1 to 13, because he is a 4, and you'd have to check each of the things against penetration against a power play. So for a power play, if there are 4, it's 1 to 13. If there are 3 penetration, it's 1 to 11. 2 is 1 to 9, and a 1 is just a 7. So he can... Um, penetrate, pass, or shoot. If he was to pass, he would turn a card over it, and that would move the, the clicker. Um, I think he's going to penetrate, so it's going to be 1 to 13. 
Again, I'm gonna, I usually roll the die. I'm not going to, I'll, I'll do this just so I stay consistent, I guess. So one to 13 is gonna deke for a power play and it's an eight. So McKinnon steps in, shoots number five. It's a goalie rating. And I roll on Jack Campbell, which is an 11. Save any defensive player picks it up. So it's going to go to anybody. We're going to give it to Marner. And for Marner, just for the sake of demonstration, I am going to skate. Marner is a 1 to 14. If I draw a 1, it is going to be a breakaway. Now, again, when I play at home, I just use this. But we're going to use the cards for now. So we're drawing a card, so a card is always worth 1. So 1 to 14, it's a 5. So it goes 1, 2, 3. Sorry, it would be a 3 for a skate, not, not 1 for drawing the card. So it's a 3 for a skate. And um, he's got it. He is going to skate again. So 1 to 14 would be successful. And it's a 12. So another successful skate. So 1, 2, 3. And... Let's see if we can, let's, we're just going to ice it this time. So he's going to ice it and puck iced outside shot only for right D. So puck is iced. It's going to be a five, one for the card, four for icing. And you get to 19 and you kind of leave it there. So puck is iced, um, outside shot only for right D. So Makar is going to get the shot. Um, Bunting would come out of the penalty box. And we're going to take that outside shot for the right D. It's going to shoot. It's a nine. It is a goalie rating. Lots of goalie ratings for Colorado. And a six on the goalie rating would be a goal. So um, Makar would score. So basically, hopefully that helps a little bit on how to use a super advanced power play. Uh, whenever you draw a card, it's going to be one. If it's an ice... Um, you would add four more, so it would be a five. If you skate, it's going to be a one, two, three. Whenever you hit flip one or flip two, uh, you would flip a card. So I guess on 13, I should have flipped a card. And actually on the Makar goal, I should have flipped a card. So all three would have been flipped because the timer didn't make it to 19. Um, maybe I'll just do one more power play just to help people out. Uh, let's put Colorado back on the power play. And I'll draw three more cards. So you'll start with a face-off. Again, and I'll just, I won't use my 20-sided die. I'll just use cards for this point on in case people don't have it. So you start off with a face-off, and the face-off is going to be a 17. We know Colorado was a plus 2. So 17 plus 2 inferior right winger. So again... We have Toronto win the faceoff. It's going to go to Marner. So it's going to go one to four. Now, for an example's sake, let's say the faceoff would have went to Rantanen. We would have had one for the faceoff, and I would have Rantanen deke one to 13. So I would just move it one and pull a card for the deke. And then he would, if it was successful, he would shoot from there. So whenever you start a power play, especially in today's NHL, you start in the uh, the team that took the penalty, you start in their end. So that's why when they win the draw, they would get to penetrate, pass, or you can just shoot from the outside. Uh, so the actual one had Marner winning the uh, faceoff. He was going to ice it. And it says puck iced, shorthand to right defense of 14. So... One, two, three, four, five, and we've hit the seven. So we need to flip a card. So that the first of three that gets flipped because we are on the seven. And it reads right D of 14. And we check right D defense 14. And it says take away puck. So Brody would have the puck. We're gonna ice it again. Puck ice shorthanded right D has control. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to ice it. Brody's got it. And again, because we're going to have to flip a card because we've hit 13. Last one, Brody's got it. Let's just say Brody's going to skate. I would never skate at 1 to 10, but let's just say he skates to create a turnover. So he's going to skate. 
It is a 16. So he gets one for the skate. If he would have made it, it would have been three. He does get credit for one for the skate, but now it's an outside shot for Colorado. And you'd give it to the guy with the highest offensive rating. These are all fours. So during the course of the game, you'd check and see who has not had a shot with the fours. So if McKinnon's shot, Rantanen's shot, and Landeskog is shot, then it has to go to Kadri or Makar. So if I was to have a choice, I'd go to Kadri just simply for the fact that if he misses, it's going to be a loose puck. So I might get the puck back. So Kadri is a four. He's going to deke one to 14. Let me show his card so you can see. His breakaway penetration is a four. So his chances are one to 13. And it's a five. So he makes it. So we move one for the penetration. And now he's going to shoot. It's a six, which is the goalie rating. On Jack Campbell, we roll a nine, which is the rebound. So again, we're pulling a card, so we're going to move one on the timer. Rebound says defense, any player, the four. So it would go to either, um, oh, this is, this is, that. I'm glad that came up. Defense rating was a four. Uh, when you check for defense ratings, Matthews is a one on the PK. You use the number in the bracket. Morgan Riley is a three. Brody would be a four. Mitch Marner would be a four. So I can give it to Brody or to Morgan Riley. And I'll probably give it to, did it say any player? Um, yeah, we'll give it to, to Marner so we can skate. Um, I was going to say something. I forgot. I lost my train of thought. Yeah, so when you, when you are playing... Stratomatic on the penalty kill. I'll always go with the best defensive players. So the four and on defense 12, 13, 14, it takes away. Even though their PK rating of one and a three is weak, rarely do those rebounds come up where you're looking for that number. It doesn't happen a whole lot. A lot of the times you're just icing all the time. And so that's what these cards would be more. So Marner has it. And he's going to skate 1 to 14. It's a 7. He would make it 1, 2, 3. And he keeps the puck. We flip a card because we're on 19. So I'm hoping that helps. Uh, let me know if it doesn't or if I've maybe made things more muddled than what they were previously. But that is how you use the uh, mm -hmm. super advanced power play for Stratomatic. At least that's how I play the super advanced power play for Stratomatic. Um, yeah, I hope that helps. Bye for now.